Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. This is the beginner series. And in this series, we're gonna go through each step of music production. Okay, we're gonna break it down so that you can walk your way through each step and come out victorious. We want you to get results. We want you to be there, okay? Because music production can seem daunting and that's because it wasn't taught well. So we're here to teach you each step of music production. So let's get started. Today, we're gonna talk about music theory for beginners. Now, I say for beginners because we're not going to go over everything about music theory. We're going to go over three topics. We're going to talk about scales, chords, and time. Okay, those are the basics, basis, basis is whatever the word is. It's the foundation for music theory. Okay, so let's start with time because this is the biggest issue I find with most people trying to get into music production in general is that they're off beat. Okay, so you really, really need to pay attention. Uh, to what I'm going to say because a lot of people can get confused so let me throw on my headphones real quick so I can hear it and uh, let's right click let's select the tempo now what is a tempo a tempo is measured in BPM BPM stands for beats per minute think of your tempo like a heart rate okay just literally think of it like a heart racing at this amount of uh, at this speed so what we can do is turn on a metronome to help us better track the tempo of the song. So this is what 90 BPM sounds like. So that's great. We hear a tick going along with the speed of the song. But the question is, how do we measure using that tick? Okay, so now that we know what BPM stands for, the question is, what is a beat in the first place? So we have beats per minute, but what is a beat? A beat is every time your heart beats, okay? It's every time you hear a heartbeat. That is one beat. So every time we hear the metronome, that's gonna be one beat, okay? So this is what we're talking about when we talk about beats and bars. I'm gonna teach you the, the difference between beats and bars. So here's the difference. Beats are literally every time the heart beats or every time your tempo hits. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the question is, why am I counting to four? In general, when we make music, we write in what's called four over four time, four or four. And what that means is for every four beats, for every four ticks of the metronome, we're gonna consider that one bar. Okay, so a bar is a collection of heartbeats. Okay, so just think of it that way. You will never get confused as long as you think of the tick and the pulse of the beat as a heartbeat. That will always remind you, okay, that's a beat, a heartbeat, and then the bigger things are bars. Even if you don't know the name, you're gonna remember that these ticks are heartbeats. One, two, three, four. So every time I count to four, that is one beat. I mean, excuse me, one bar. Okay, every time I count to four, that's one bar. So every time our heart beats, boom, 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 boom. Okay, we have four heartbeats, that's one bar. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we have to ask ourselves, what is the timing situation that you see on a lot of sheet music? Four, four, three, four, six, eight. It's a ratio of how we count beats to bars. Okay, so for every four beats, it's gonna equal one bar. Um, now, for example, if you have three, four, that means for every three beats, we're gonna have one bar. So if I shorten this length here, to three beats, we're only gonna to count to three and that's gonna be considered a bar. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now this counts further for whatever reason. This is just being simple. Um, but anyway, when you count to three, that's one bar. Okay, you see this in a lot of rock music, you see it in a lot of alternative, even in Latin music, you're gonna see three, four timing, not four, four. Now, why do we do that? It's because our ear, is in the Western world used to hearing things on four beat measures. It's just how we're programmed as human beings. We're used to expecting something to repeat after four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's just how our brain was taught to measure. Okay, so that's how we measure a lot of things, whether it's speech, music, uh, that's our expectation system. So you ever have those feelings when you're listening to a song and you're like, you expect something to happen at a certain spot, but it just doesn't. And you get, you know, you either frown or you get happy because they surprise you with a different placing. That's that same system, okay? It's our expectation of that four to four timing. 
Now again, three to four means three beats per bar. Four to four means four beats per bar. So that's the timing in a nutshell. Now we can also go over note lengths and different parts of the note lengths. Now that we have courses on that, okay? And we're coming out with a new course bundle called the Music Theory Essentials. And you can learn more from the Music Theory Essentials. It's gonna go over all the foundation of music theory that you need to know how to build chords, melody, how to understand note length, how to understand writing a full song, chord progressions, the understanding of musical notes in general and how they mesh together. It's gonna to have all that for you so you won't get confused when you're making your songs. So now that we've gone over time, let's go over scales because this is another misconception that we find in music theory. Now, one of our systems we're gonna show later, uh, we're gonna leave an annotation in the video, one of our systems, we have a video on YouTube called How to Make Any Chord. And a lot of people are like, this doesn't work. This isn't music theory. But that system is a separate system. So we have different systems in which you can learn music theory. One is that we teach you pure number. And we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about this later. We teach you pure number, how to make chords out of pure number. Okay. Regardless of scale. So my thing is, I really want to emphasize this is that scales are man-made okay scales are man-made so if you build a system around a scale it might not be perfect okay because it's a man-made thing and we can even go back further into how music was created i'm not going to go that far in this video so i'm going to open up the piano roll here so we can have a better visual so what is a scale let's define a scale a scale is a sequence of preferred notes that is it. A scale is a sequence of preferred tones or notes. That's how scales are built. And there are thousands of scales, thousands of preferences on how to get from one note to the next note. It really is insanity almost. How people think they have to stick to a certain scale. Okay, so scales are man-made. Okay, it's a preference of notes. That's why music in the West sounds different from music in the East. They have different preferred scales. Now, how do we uh, create a scale? So a scale can be created on any note, but what I'm gonna demonstrate here is how to create a scale in the uh, chromatic scale, which is another system of a 12 note system, meaning every note from A to A is considered one octave. So everything in between, we're gonna create a scale. Everything, not just the white notes or not just the black notes. But what I'm going to do today is create the A natural minor scale. Okay. And in music theory essentials, when it comes out, we're going to go over modes and how you can create modes as well. But right now we're going to go over the basics. So don't worry about modes and everything else. Let's just talk about the terminology at hand. Scales. Again, a sequence of preferred notes that go together. That's it. Okay. So let's start on A. We're going to draw out the A natural minor scale. So in that scale, in short, it's basically all the white notes from A to A. So it's all the white notes. Okay, and there we have what we call an octave. Okay, which consists of uh, 12 semitones between each, each uh, note. So A4 has 12 notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, until we repeat again. So each of these twelve semitones are called makes up an octave. Okay, so when we're talking about octave, it's a range of notes, which consists of twelve notes. Okay. So here's the scale within one octave. Okay, this is the A natural minor scale. It just happens to land on every white note. So it's a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So this is a very simple scale. If you ever get confused, you can always refer back to this scale. Now also there's a different scale which also has all the white notes and that's C major, which is, um, actually we're not even gonna confuse you with all the different scales, okay? Let's just focus on the A natural minor scale. So here's the scale, it's a preference of notes. Now I'm gonna show you how I can build my own scale without you know, any name or nomenclature. So here's the biggest thing we teach in music theory in a day is that names come last. Okay. Can't tell you how many times people are like, you didn't name that chord, you did blah, blah, blah. Okay. You name last. Things are named last, right? If you're a fan of the Bible stories, 
Adam named the animals after they were created. Okay. They didn't have a name. They were just animals. Okay. They just did what they did. They were what they were. Then they were named. Names are for the purpose of translating language from one person to the next so that you can communicate. Sometimes you might not have a name for a certain chord. Okay. So, you know, when you're drawing scales and making chords, don't get caught up on in the name. Because if you get caught up in the name, you're forced to create that specific chord. For example, if I say make a D major chord, you're forced to use the notes uh, D. So D major, we're going to show you a different video on how to build chords. Um, but anyway, I'm going to kind of brush over the what we call the chord code. So anyway, this is our zero point, our resting point, which is D. We're just going to count up the keyboard. Zero, four, seven is the major code. So zero is D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, traditional music theorists would say, why are you calling it zero and not one? Why are you doing it? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. The reason is this is a pure number system and this separates. It's two different systems we teach in the music theory essential course when it comes out. Okay. So this one is based on pure number, how to make a chord anywhere on the keyboard. It doesn't matter if you close your eyes. You can make this chord anywhere on the keyboard and we'd go through different chord codes. It's based on pure number. Now, what was the thing I said before about scales? Scales are man-made preferences. Okay. Of tone numbers are not man-made. They just exist. They're created in reality. It's how we live. It's how everything works. Numbers. It's a pure system. Okay. So that's why we teach the pure system for chords. That's why we call this the zero point. If we called this, for example, traditional um, music theorists might make a chord called A minor. This is the A minor chord. They may say the A minor chord is one, three, five. Let's say I delete every note in this scale and I say, okay, build out the chord one, three, five. You're going to start on A and assume this is one. Then you're going to count up your keyboard two, three, four, five. Is this A minor? This is not A minor at all. What a minor is, is a series of numbers, which go together zero, four, seven. Now let's start at a, assuming this is zero, then we're going to count up, uh, or excuse me, this is for minor. It's zero, three, seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we have the a minor chord. And this is what confuses so many people around the world. I cannot scream this loud enough. Don't start with scales. That's what's messing you up. You're work, you're learning backwards in music theory. Okay. What you need to learn is the pure number system and then also the traditional system. So you can understand how to create chords relatively because what that system is, when I say one, three, five, it's a relative system. You have to have a chord, a scale mapped out before you even use those, those numbers, one, three, five. If you'd never have a scale mapped out, one, three, five means nothing to you. So the thing is, you have to know what scale you're creating with, which scale you're using to uh, write music. And that can be a whole nother system of understanding. So you can see how you can go straight to the chord without knowing which scale you're in. Okay. You can learn a scale and still do the relative thing. It's two different systems. And that's what we're trying to teach you here at busyworksbeats.com with the new music theory essentials coming out soon. Okay. So that's the difference between traditional in the way we teach. Now we do teach the traditional way, but just keep in mind, that's our difference. We're teaching you pure number. And that's why you're confused most of the time when it comes to music theories, because you don't understand that the system is based on a man-made system, which is a scale system. Okay. Now there are benefits of using scales and different things, but let's say, let's just go over one example. Now this is for more intermediate people because we didn't define what scale degrees are. Um, and we go over that in the music theory essentials, which are coming out soon. But let's say, uh, we want to create a chord out of the a natural minors, uh, scale. What we can do is start on a and simply skip the next note within the scale. Okay. So we're skipping B. We're going to C. skip D go to E that makes a chord, which is a minor. So let's do that same system by skipping the notes in the scale to create a chord. But this time we're going to use a different scale. So we're not going to use any cool, easy scales. Let's create our own scale. So 
So now this is our new created scale. We don't have a name for it because I just created it out of thin air. Okay, so you saw how I created this scale just out of thin air. I'm sure someone named it something. Um, and that's the whole system of music theory. It's that we have to start with the name. Why? We're creating from our mind. From our mind, we can then name it later. Okay, so don't get caught up in the name game. So let's create a chord using this scale, using that same system. Let's start on the A. Let's skip every note. Now, does this chord sound pleasing? No, it sounds terrible compared to A minor. Okay, so using that system doesn't always work, and that's why Music Theory Essentials is going to teach you what really makes a chord. Okay, what really makes a harmony. So a chord, I should define that, is a combination of two or more notes which sound pleasing together. Now, not all chords sound pleasing. Some chords, believe it or not, were even banned by the church because they sounded so horrible. Okay, so chords are a combination of notes um, we, which we call harmonies, harm, you know, things that go together well. Some chords sound good, some don't. It's all subjective, okay? Music, the definition of music is the creation of beauty using voice or instrument, okay? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, music today would be banned in church, two th you know, a thousand years ago. So you really have to look at music theory and question it. And that's what we're going to go through in the music theory essentials so that you can better understand this stuff. We don't want to leave you confused. There's no need to, you know, struggle your way through a music course. Um, so let me make sure I define everything. We went over what a scale is, a preference of notes, a, a sequence of notes, which someone prefers. What is a chord? It's two or more notes, which sound good together. Okay. Um, we went over the different definitions of a beat versus a bar. Remember, a beat is like a heartbeat. So every time the metronome hits, that's one beat. Four of those in general uh, creates a bar. Now, there are different time signatures, okay, which are different ways to interpret the bar length. There's three, four. There's four, four. Three, four just means we're going to consider every three beats one bar. Four, four means we're going to consider four beats one bar okay so you just base it on the heartbeat okay don't forget the heartbeat if you get confused just stick with the heartbeat analogy okay and bpm is how many beats per minute so it's the speed of the heart okay we went over you know the chord codes i didn't really dive too deep in that because we have another video for you and uh, we're going to send that to you and we went over how scales are created so that you get away from the mysticism of scales they're just preferences of notes there's no just keep in mind, scales are man-made. So building a system around man-made things is going to lead to some confusion at some point. But we also teach a pure number system, okay? And that's going to teach you how to build chords anywhere on the keyboard. I'm literally going to close my eyes right now to prove that I can make the major 7 chord anywhere on the keyboard. So the major 7 chord is 0, 4, 7, 11. Again, we're going to have a video for you going over the chord codes but right now i'm just going to kind of brush over the concept i'm literally closing my eyes reaching over to my keyboard and i land on where we at i land on e flat or d sharp so using the chord codes i can literally build major seven chord from this point d sharp we're going to call it d sharp now we go over the naming also in the music theory essentials so we're going to consider this the zero point so this is zero all I have to do is count up my keyboard. Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the code is zero, four, seven, eleven. So that's four. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I need my other hand, so it's gonna get a little awkward talking into the mic. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we made the D sharp or E flat major seven chord. It's that simple. You don't need a scale to use chords, okay? And you're gonna learn in music theory that sometimes you borrow chords from different scales. So a scale doesn't, you know, it doesn't even lock you in in the first place. So it's better that you learn the chords and learn how which ones sound best and how to put those together. And we also have a, 
it's a science behind putting chords together as well. So again, all that's covered in Music Theory Essentials, which is coming out soon. What you want to do is click that link below to get joined up for the beginner series where we're going to go over all the beginning aspects of music production. Okay, so far we went over the DAW, we went over basics of music theory, we went over the tools of the trade, and we're going to get into the different steps of music production as we go. So thanks for watching today. Be sure to like and share with your friends because I think this can benefit a lot of producers getting us out of that confused state that we're in because we weren't taught this correctly. Okay, so click that link below and sign up with your email to get started with the beginner series here at busyworksbeats.com and be sure to confirm your email so that you can actually get the, the proper uh, video sent to you. So thanks for watching today. It's busyworksbeats.com.